Hello and welcome to another Flight Gear video. Today we will be simulating a double engine failure in an altitude of around 10,000 feet and then returning to our departure airport but to another runway just uh, gliding without any uh, thrust from the engines. So I chose the Boeing 787 Dreamliner to simulate that because unlike other models in flight gear it has a ram air turbine and it's fully operational here. So there is this in case of an emergency of total electricity failure you can extend a little propeller at the belly of your airplane and that's called the ram air turbine and when I press this red button to extend it you can see it here at the belly of the of the airplane this little propeller is the ram air turbine and just by the by the airspeed from outside when we're up in the air this propeller will be operated and it will uh, it will help us generate enough electricity to use our instruments so what we will also do i will uh, i will retract the ram air turbine again. We will also use the auxiliary power unit so that we can operate flaps and air brakes. Uh, that's very important for the final approach when we have no thrust from our engines. It's very important to get the speed management right and not to touch down before the runway actually. So it is uh, the, the approach to the runway is more tricky. So you have to plan it beforehand and you uh, have to be very careful with your speed management. So we are prepared for the flight already. Unlike a real emergency, I pre-planned our route more or less. I also added it into the route manager of the autopilot, but um, I will not activate the autopilot. We will do it all manually. Uh, it's just to give me some orientation here about the route. So we want to start uh, in New York LaGuardia on runway four. We're doing a left turn after the engines have failed. And then we will approach via, uh, via Titaboro. We will approach LaGuardia again from northwest heading for runway 13. So in a 130 degrees angle. This is the plan. And there are two ways how we can make the engines fail in this airplane. So we could either, uh, either use the system failures and just untick these two engines. That's the usual way how you simulate the engine failure. But here in this model we have another option. We can overload the engines with uh, too much speed. And for that we can use the auto throttle. Um, it allows us when we go to Mach the Mach speed, we can in fact overload both engines and simulate the engine failure more realistically by applying too much power and too much speed to them and that will cause them to fail when we're at around 400 knots in a, in a low altitude the, both engines will fail and we don't need to use the failure simulation for that so it's a little bit more realistic then so we are already ready to go we apply flaps five degrees flaps position two we uh, disarm the, the um, parking brake and now our airplane should already start moving a little bit because of the idle thrust of the engines so we will just do a regular takeoff and then try to go as fast as the plane can to overload the engines. So I'm applying 40% of engine thrust first to synchronize both en engines to make sure later with full thrust uh, the airplane doesn't start to yaw to either side of the runway. So we're now at 40% and now we give full thrust. So in the beginning of the flight we will simply follow the extension of the runway so heading for zero for zero and once the engines have failed we will do a sharp left turn so rotate retract gear flaps position one 
And now I hand over the speed management to the auto throttle, and that should continuously uh, accelerate us. At the same time, I'm looking here at the map just to keep the heading true. Want to fly just straight away from the runway. And I have to watch the speedometer. So with the pitch angle, I can control when the engine failure will occur. If I pitch the nose down, we will get faster. And then this will, us, this will bring us closer to the point of engine overload. If I pitch up steeper, then we're gaining more altitude and we're not getting so fast. That's, uh, that will uh, delay the engine failure. So I want to get up to an altitude of around 8000 and then pitch down to accelerate the plane. To make sure that the window heaters are activated, otherwise we can't see much and uh, visibility is decisive in the final phase of this gliding approach. So we're at, at 8000. I will pitch down now to make the plane pick up speed. We need something around 380 knots until the engine failure occurs. And I want it to occur at around 10,000 feet. That gives us enough time to think what to do and uh, to make the turnaround and to make decisions where we want to land, if we want to land in Teterboro on the western uh, side of the Hudson or if we want to return to La Guardia. So we're keeping this um, the altitude of around 10,000. Still accelerating and now we should soon hear an alarm of engine overload because of too much speed. Here it comes. We can go a little bit higher. So now we've broken the engines. So I can still steer the plane with a stick, but what I cannot operate are flaps and uh, air brakes, but we need it in the end. So I activate the ram air turbine, I activate the APU, I disarm the alarm and I do a left turn to return either to Teterboro or to La Guardia. When you have no thrust capabilities anymore, First of all, I will cut off the... No, it's already done. I, I would cut off the fuel supply for the two engines. So, uh, we're doing the left turn to return to, to either Titaboro or La Guardia. And when you're only gliding, when you have zero thrust, you should not do a very tight turn because that costs you a lot of speed and speed is very precious now. Altitude and speed are the two currencies that we're dealing with now. So we still have a lot of fuel in the tanks but we cannot use it because our engines are broken. But what we still get in terms of energy is we have a lot of energy because of the altitude that we have at around 11,200 feet and now we're trading this this uh, energy that we have because of our altitude, we're trading it into speed and this speed will, will create lift on our wings to make sure that we are gently gliding and not just falling from the sky like a stone. So what we do now, we're aiming for Teterboro because that would be a good point of orientation. That would be our turning point. Teterboro Airport lies exactly in the ILS um, approach for La Guardia Runway 13. That's why we are now aiming for Teterboro, but we will be still way too high to, to attempt a touchdown there without a go around. So instead we will use Teterboro Airport as a reference point to do our, another left turn heading for, back for La Guardia again. So from our little cheating map here, it shows us that we are now almost heading for Teterboro. So what's very important in this phase of the flight is speed management. From the experiments that I did before with this plane, I found out 
that the best that the best um, travel speed with no engines is around 200 knots and I can uh, I c to achieve a maximum distance to return to an airport and I can control the speed with the pitch of the of the plane's nose if I keep the angle of attack at around zero degrees up to maybe two degrees I will end up with something around 200 knots and I should keep a speed of 200 knots the minimum would be something around 180 without using flaps and I absolutely want to avoid flaps because flaps create drag and f drag costs speed and costs distance that I, that I can still use to travel back so no flaps at the moment if you want to apply flaps you apply it in the very last moment of the in the very last phase on short final and also the gear you extend it in the last possible moment to postpone the drag of the gear until the very end to make sure that you do not touch down before the runway especially not when you're approaching la guardia with the water right in front of you you don't want to go down in the in the river you want to make sure that you reach the the runway even if you're still a little bit too fast that would still be tolerable but going down becoming too slow and going down too early that's unacceptable in our current situation you must avoid this at any cost so here you can already see Teterboro we're below so the speed is correct now we have 200 knots in the display that's good that's good for gliding and we're uh, already down to 7000 that's not very much so i will uh, initiate the left turn earlier to do a shortcut over manhattan island not to fly the complete path over teterboro i will do a very gentle left turn instead of a sharp left turn over teterboro i will already start heading for La Guardia and here on the left you can already see La Guardia but we have to get the angle right to uh, approach for runway 13 so we have to be very careful not to lose too much altitude that's why we have to turn very gently not to slow the plane down too much and we still have 6000 feet that's our currency that we are trading in exchange for speed and wing lift I have to now activate the APU and this should give me back control over the flaps and the air brakes because we need flaps and air brakes uh, on short final that's crucial for the success of this landing attempt so as you can see I'm not flying over Teterboro I'm doing the shortcut to get to La Guardia faster and the glide slope that we're using it is much steeper than you, you would usually go in a regular approach for La Guardia a regular approach is with a three degrees angle and we will go down quite much steeper here we are losing more uh, more altitude so the sink rate is higher that could lead to a little black blackout effect once we touch down on the runway we shall see if if it's gonna be a gentle touchdown or a rough touchdown but most important we don't want anyone to get hurt and we don't want to seriously damage our plane so now we're high enough I think it's time to apply a little bit of flaps flaps one we shall go down now more flaps not to be too fast when we're approaching let's check if the flaps are really applied yeah that works here is also the flaps indicator so we extend the gear it's important that we lose speed now even more flaps yeah we are very high full flaps and I'm also applying air brakes because now we are not in danger of getting down too soon we would rather be too fast so we have full flaps full air brakes gear extended now we shall do our attempt with a sharp left turn uh, the speed is sort of okay it should be in the end it should be something between 150 140 
we will detach the air brakes. Five, sink rate. Let's go down a little bit steeper. Let's do a nose dive and get up and try to touch down as gently as we can. Apply full air brakes again. Now that was sort of gentle. Full wheel brakes. We don't have thrust reversers as we have no functioning engines. Now that was quite gentle compared to my other simulations here that was quite a gentle approach for zero thrust capabilities we will try to roll to the terminal maybe we still got enough momentum to roll for the terminal just to make it more comfortable for the ground crew we will just roll over all these signs let's see let's see not to crash into the gate at the end, to make it to the end, we activate the parking brake. Yeah, and that was just it. So that was a, a double engine failure in 10,000 feet, which gives us uh, still plenty of options to return to different airports in the New York area. As I said, the most important thing in the end is speed management, not to touch down too fast and not to, to touch down too early before the runway. So this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, double engine failure tutorial. See you again for another flight gear video next time. Goodbye.